We play and call it work. So here we are with Vito. We're going to get Vito's thoughts on the new Citadel contrast paint system. He's going to uh, paint up a little demonette. Yeah, figure that, uh, you know, doing a Heat Nights of Slash and Slash for 40k and for 30k, why not try out Demonette with new contrast? Um, for those of you who have seen my current paint style for um, my Slanesh, I'm going to try to mimic that uh, using um, contrast. So we'll see if I can do that. I have no idea where to start. Um, so with my flesh tone, it has like this reddish kind of tone in there so now there okay so there is a thinning medium okay. you can apply the flesh tone with a little dab of the thinning medium okay um obviously when using the mediums use a clean brush when drawing it out or yeah. do that first kind of thing um but otherwise yeah so that thinning medium will break the color down so if you want to use start off with say like a little bit of a flesh and then you know create a little gradient i don't know uh, again, this is more or less just your first impressions of the paint system, uh, whether or not it's something that, uh, you know, you can see yourself using or, you know. Yeah, I, I haven't used this yet. I'm going to try and, I don't want to use the word break it. Uh, I want to push it to, um, I suppose, where maybe it hasn't been pushed. Um, I know, like, you just kind of push it on or, you know, dab it and then apply it. So I want to try to see maybe, you know, how it mixes with different colors. So that's what I'm gonna be trying to do um, right now. So right now I'm just grabbing a little bit of contrast Gilliman flesh. I mix that with the technical contrast medium. Uh, and away we go. So you've primed it with using the uh, white scar or skull white or? Uh, I think it's... What's it called now? I think white? it's white scar. White scar. I think sure. so. Yeah, it's what we had on on hand. Yeah, it's it's the spray primer. You use the spray primer for that. You just assembled that model and got it ready for this little demonstration. And so yeah. I'm already seeing um, how it kind of wants to. Hmm. Well, I guess the, my words are escaping me right now. So it when you apply it, it immediately goes right into the crevices. Um, so it kind of it, it goes on top and then just kind of flows right into the, those deepest, darkest uh, places. So that's kind of really neat. Um, haven't really seen anything like that. It, almost like a wash in a way, but then you can see those white areas. It leaves those white areas on top. So that's kind of neat, I kind of like that. Um, so while that's wet, Chris, what's the um, dry time <coughs> for contrast? Um, it seems to be fairly quick. It's about as fast as a shade wash. So if, if you apply a very heavy uh, layer, it'll take a little while. And if you apply a thin layer, it shouldn't take too long. So I'm debating between Blood Angels Red and Flesh Terrors Red. Flesh Terrors Red almost has um, a darker, almost like a magenta hue to it, whereas Blood Angels is more pure red. So I'm gonna go with Flesh Terrors Red. I'm gonna try to mix that. that. The uh, the tear that Matt had done that uh, is the Flesh Terror. That's the red. Flesh Terror Red. Yeah, and he just uh, he just applied a fairly even amount on that surface, so you can see how vibrant that is. All right, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and mix that um, with the Gullman Flesh and see what I can. Oh wow, that's actually quite thick. So I'm gonna get more of my technical contrast medium. Being careful not to. Uh, spill anything and I'm cleaning my brush here so we don't uh, you know mix any of the colors well don't contaminate it yeah exactly someone's yelling outside so that's kind of interesting alright so that's kind of an interesting color tone there and so basically you're going about this in kind of in a glazing fashion right you're just going for slight transitions, you're going to apply that building the color down to an extremity and things of that nature, right? Yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain around, because normally <coughs> when you paint, um, you'd want to do, like if you're starting with your a, a black base coat, you'd go your dark tones and build your way up. Whereas with these, I'm getting the impression now that it's the reverse. You start with your light tones and then you push the dark tones 
underneath. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there, Chris. So far, that seems to be the way this works. I'm no expert in the system, as I'm still learning with it as well. So I'm actually just going to go base um, with this mix that I've got here of Gullum and Flesh and Contrast. I'm just going to go straight onto the bear. And I actually like that a lot more than going straight Gullum and Flesh. Yeah, I think I like that a lot more. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And so the intention of this kind of paint system is to get you painting your armies a lot quicker. And, I mean, you're being fairly selective yeah. as such. And so maybe adopt a mindset that maybe like you're, you've got like a hundred of these to do right now. And that's actually funny that you mentioned that because um, I will be having, I think, like 120 demonets <laughs> to paint up. Um, so something like Contrast... For you know those of you like myself who are going to have you know a ton of minis to paint, this might be the system for you. Um, so I can definitely see why this will be something um, you know that you would need. Now with my demonettes, I do have red hair on my demonettes, and it's quite dark. So I'm actually going to take this uh, flesh terror's red, and I'm actually just going to slap that on and see what that does. Oh wow! Okay. And I can see already that, you know, the, the, the more thick layers of it goes right into those recesses. And then it leaves the, oh, it almost creates a highlight, so that's actually quite interesting. You know, because I think with my technique for when I do the red hair, I'm using, uh, you know, four or five different colors I'm mixing to create the highlights. Even when I'm doing the skin for my demonettes, or for my... Um, uh, my Slanesh, I think I have eight different steps. So if I can skip some steps um, altogether, that really helps out. So contrast might be the way to go here for doing, you know, big batch painting. And I primarily use an airbrush when I when I paint. Um, I don't think this will. <coughs> excuse me. I don't think this will eliminate an airbrush if you do use an airbrush, but I can see how this will um, add to an artist's um, utility belt, their repertoire, you know, if you really need to get something done quickly, or if you just need to add to your, uh, your, your toolbox of skills. Okay. Yeah, I think I really like um, the mix of Gullum and Flesh mixed with Flesh Terrors. Um, if you ever, this might sound a little gross, but if you ever get like a bloody nose um, and then you wipe it with a paper towel and there's that little bit of remnants, I think I like that more than putting Gullman flesh and then um, having them mix on top. Just having the straight mix, I think I like that flesh tone a little bit more. So you're not noticing anything funny when mixing the colors? <coughs> they seem to blend just fine mixing them together? I think so, yeah. Um, Mixing with the technical medium and then mixing the two colors, I'm not seeing any kind of, you know, I'm not seeing anything funny going about. Um, when I do, so now right now I'm going to switch over to the metals, what would be a metal part for me. So when I do my metals, uh, I go for uh, a lead belcher, um, and then I put a layer of, um, uh, what's, uh, caribou crimson on top and then that creates my uh, almost like a purplish or a reddish type of metal so what I'm going to try to do is replicate that but using contrast so what I think I'm going to do is um, Chris was telling me about a uh, the black yeah the black is really fun uh, black, templar. black templar black templar black templar black templar where is me a black templar okay here we go black templar so what I think I'm going to go about doing this is I'm going to put black templar on first <laughs> And then I'm going to mix it. Actually, let's try mixing Magos Purple with Black Templar. See what kind of effect we get there. I would, yeah, I would definitely recommend mixing the black and the purple together first. Apply yeah. a thin layer of that, and then go in with the black if you're going to push it darker. Because again, as I've mentioned, it's easier to start off the bright and then build to the darker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just remember that. You know what? I'm going to put it to this um, Saish purple. I'm going to open that as well, just so I can see what that looks like. It's a bit darker. It's more of like a droochy violet. 
Um, so let's get a little bit of this onto my palette. This is the black that we're talking about here. Got all that there. I don't want to contaminate the paint, so I'm cleaning my brush. And then we're going to get some of this Magos purple here. I'm going to mix a nice helping of that in there. It's a bit dark, so what I should have done is probably get in the contrast of Magos purple first. So I'm going to get some of that on here. And then I'm going to get some of this Black Templar, just a bit of it. See what we get. Still a bit dark. So what I'm finding is the Black Templar <coughs> is quite dark. Um, so if you ever are going to mix Black Templar with anything, be very, very careful because it does um, over-saturate um, with everything else. So I'm going to take a little bit more of this here kind of do this in-between tone, which I think I'm liking right here. We're already creating this little bit of a variation, if you guys can see that yep. there. So I'll take a little bit more of it, create this little bit of a mid-tone, which I think I'm liking. And then we're going to apply it. Let's see what we get. All right. Very interesting. So far, what are your thoughts on the on the paints? They're they're pretty neat. They're pretty neat. Um, I think I'll definitely be grabbing it for the demonites. I was a little wary at first. Um, just what, what what made you weary about picking up these colors at first? Um, like what 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 was the apprehension as far just, as just because of uh, the way I like to paint? <laughs> um, well, for the slanesh anyway, the. Um, the amount of steps that I take to create a particular, um, uh, like th th the look that I'm looking for, sure. for for my uh, my painting technique for for Slanesh, there is a a method to it. Like I was saying, there is eight different steps, eight different uh, colors that I use. Um, so I wanted to. Uh, I was w w nervous that I wouldn't be able to achieve the exact same look, but once again, you know, if we're looking for to get, you know, a hundred models done, um, and if they're, you know, just line infantry, um, they don't have to be to the same level as maybe, you know, a Keeper of Secrets or your display models. So. It's not bad. So what I'm gonna actually going to do right now is while it's still wet, I'm actually going to take some of this Magos Purple and I'm actually going to try to mix it in and see what happens. Oh, I actually like that. <laughs> Experimenting, right? Yeah. Seeing what happens. Well, that, that's, what, that's what it's about. Right on top there. I also don't want it to be this big, you know, puddly mess. So I'm, I'm applying it on and then I'm taking off, you know, what I find to be too much. Because you, you can actually see a bit of a difference here. This is a bit lighter, and this is a bit darker here as I apply just straight um, Magos Purple. And that's more of the effect that I'm looking for for an armor. Um, than, so this is a little bit incorrect for me. So it's a good thing that I'm testing this on a you know a test model then going straight ahead and applying it on you know an actual finished piece so very interesting okay. now what I something I really wanted to try something I saw online was people using these um, to create like a non-metallic metal gold um, so that's something I do actually want to test and I think they were using a yellow for that so that's something I want to test just for funsies so let's go ahead and grab, I think, I, I end in yellow. I end in yellow is a very yellow. It's a very yellow. Yeah. So maybe I'll grab this Nasdurg yellow as well. Mix that up. That one might actually be better because it's got more, it looks like it has more of a brown hue to it. Okay, so we'll pop both those open. Maybe I can play. That's a guess. And again, I mean, if you're going to go with a non-metallic metal, I would start off with the brightest tones and build to the darkest. Okay. Again, it's a different kind of paint system, right? So, and then we're going to grab the uh, contrast medium, so they blend well. 
So let's see what we can do here, folks. And I'm gonna do it on um, her belly skirt right up here. So let's grab some of that. It's quite thick. And I like the thin. Compared to what? Uh, compared to a wash. Okay. Um, uh, the GW washes there are quite thin. This is a little bit of a thicker body, so it's somewhere in between the paints and the washes, somewhere in between there. So let's grab some of that here. Let's see what this does. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's definitely quite brighter. Very interesting. It's a nice color. Uh, this would be very interesting on like a... Um, uh, oh, help me out, Chris. What are the... Uh, the guys, the, the hammer guys for Age of Sigmar, what are they called? The hammer, oh, you know, the Stormcast? The Stormcast. <laughs> I was going to say Storm, I was going to say Stormhost Silver, but... Fire, a fire Stormcast Slayers? <laughs> <laughs> that's an actual color, though, the Stormhost Silver. So now I've got the brighter color on, so I'm actually going to grab some of the um, Nasdurg yellow, which is this darker yellow, it's almost like a brown, and I'm going to go straight right on top of it. Let's see what happens here. Well, that first layer isn't quite dry, so you're actually kind of doing a bit of a blend, like a wet blend, eh? Yeah. Because I want the two colors to be in there together. So maybe down here a little bit, we're going to be darker. And something else is quite interesting. They, I thought they would take a lot longer to dry um, than, let's say, a, a wash, for example. But they actually dry a little faster. Than, uh, than washes. I mean, it all depends how much you apply. I think I applied a little bit too much here um, on her talons, but uh, it's actually quite interesting. So I'm going to let that dry on her uh, her skirt. So now what I want to, that's one color I'm very interested in is the white. That was something that spoke to me quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick test of that. Uh, the white. The white. Oh, it's right by the green there. This one? No, right a little bit. Oh, this yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. All right, so we have Apothecary White. It almost looks like a gray. Yep. So I'm very, very curious how that works. And I imagine you can almost mix this white with any of these colors to almost create your own color. Yes. So that would be very interesting too. Yeah, you can add it to other colors and create highlight with it. That's kind of cool. So I'm just going to go straight Apothecary White. Yeah, so it's almost just a, a gray tone here. I actually got a little bit of bleeding from the yellow there. So let's just play with that, why not? Yeah, you should be able to just uh, push it out of there. Yep. Tons of bleeding. All right. But I actually see that the, the gray actually goes right into the uh, the folds of the cloth here, I know it's starting to bleed actually quite a bit, yep. I suppose I should have let it dry. But you can see it actually goes right into the folds and it, it, it it's, it's shading everything that uh, would be difficult to actually paint white. Um, normally when I paint white, um, I just go right with the airbrush and put a little bit of um, off-white from Vallejo right into my airbrush and painting white is very easy for me. I know it's, it's difficult for some people. Um, but with with contrast, um, I think this changes painting white. I think painting white for um, a lot of people is going to be very easy because you just put this right on top of your meat and um, the shades everything um, everything for you. It goes right into all the crevices and it, it creates a, a gray tone. Um, it's going to be interesting because I believe there's two primers um, and you can create a almost like two different types of white. So you can create a cool white and an, um, a warm white. So depending on the look that you're looking for, you can create you know, your two different types of white. So that's going to be really, really neat to see um, once those those different primers, um, those primers come in. So that's really interesting. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my... So that's pretty much where you would want to take it as far as getting it ready for tabletop, right? 
for the, for the most part, yeah, for the most part, I'm very happy with the skin tone um, that I got here. Um, I mean, I would push it a little bit fur further if I had a little bit more time to play with it. Um, but I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I think on this side, I'm a little bit more happier with this the way this purple came out. I think I'd play with it a little, little bit more. Uh, it's not quite the metallic look that I was looking for, but I'd be very interesting to see if we put a metallic, like a, a lead belcher, and then put the contrasts on top of that. That'd be very interesting to see to play with this if you would create like a, a metallic contrast. So, but besides that, yeah, I think contrasts are pretty cool. Um, I don't think, and they're a little game changing, but I still think I'm going to be sticking with the airbrush um, to create the effects that I want. Like I said, for if you want, if you've got a ton of minis to do, um, contrast will, will really help. Like I said, line infantry, all that kind of stuff. But, but you as, as a more experienced painter though, like would, would these have a home in your toolbox? Um, or is this something that you might pass on? Uh, I, I'd be very selectful. Selectful, is that a word? Selectful. Um, with which ones I would pick up. I wouldn't pick up the whole range. Um, I, I think every tool has a purpose in someone's utility belt. Um, so I, I'd pick up some, I'd play with them, i use some. But yeah, I, I, I personally would have maybe a few of them, but I, I probably wouldn't use them a bunch. For me personally, just the way I uh, the way I paint, um, but I think they're they're definitely neat, and I think they're definitely going to help a lot of people out there, um, especially people who aren't um, as advanced uh, as advanced painters. You know, you see a lot of people they'll go into uh, a games workshop and they'll have you know the Codex Gray Army. Uh, so these are really going to help you to get everything ready, and you can finally have you know a fully painted army in a couple of days using contrast. So I think these this is a really great system. Well, very cool. So, yeah. that's Vito's thoughts on these paints. Uh, Vito, how long have you been painting, Vito? Uh, I started when I was 18. I'm now 29, so about 11 years. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so you've been painting for quite a while. Yeah. And uh, you've done, uh, you've been commissioned painter. And I have, yeah. Getting your armies ready here at the studio. Yep. And so you continue to paint to this day. Yes. And so, and... Uh, you're you th you're thinking that these contrast paints are definitely something that would definitely help somebody out and 100 percent yeah yeah i definitely think that uh these are a really cool system almost uh, a kinship to inks um but they dry a lot quicker and uh, i highly recommend anyone if you are new um, to painting highly recommend them or even if you're a pro uh, try them out. I think they could definitely, like I said, they're not the end all to be all, but they definitely deserve a spot in your utility belt to painting. Well, there we go. So that's a ringing endorsement from Vito. Just ringing. Ringing. Ding. Ringing. Ding. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thank you, Vito. Yeah. Awesome.